Hey everyone, welcome to this video and in this video I'm going to explain how to organize your files and folders on the computer. Something that not everyone finds completely easy. I personally, with a little bit of OCD, sort of cringe when I look over someone's shoulder at their computer and see a desktop full of icons and files and folders and I just don't know how people work that way. So I know I've had people reach out to me saying they struggle with this kind of thing so hopefully this video helps you today. If you have any questions about anything I've done or any feedback or ideas on how I could improve my system, let me know in the comments below this video or on the blog post if you're reading that. So let's get into it. So to start off with, let's talk about how to use uh, your desktop downloads and uh, documents folders. Now these are three folders that will appear, whether you're a PC or a Mac user, every computer pretty much has these, these folders. So on the Mac, um, you've got the documents up here. This is kind of it just comes standard to where a lot of people save files and folders. We've got the desktop, which is obviously the background here. You know, these files are on the desktop. And then we have the downloads as well. Um, and I've got some files in there as well. So how do we use these three things? Personally, with the downloads where I am, as the name suggests, the downloads folder is where you download files and things uh, that you've downloaded from the web or from your email. And the key thing with the downloads folder is that it is a temporary holding place for files and documents. You should not be leaving things in downloads long term. There's pretty much two things you should do with downloads. You should either save them and put them into your document storage, which I'll come back to, or you should be deleting them. Okay, they, files do not live in here long term. This is a temporary holding place. So for example, this is an image I downloaded um, for the blog post that I've written about this video. I downloaded this from Canva. I've actually now uploaded this to the post. I don't need to keep this image. So what am I gonna do? I am going to delete it. Here are some vouchers. Purchased a, a, a voucher for uh, going to the golf range. So I'm actually gonna use these hopefully in the next few weeks. So what I might do actually is just put them in my Dropbox for now. And there we go, my download is clear. So there's a either delete it or go and store it. That's the downloads. And then the desktop, we pretty much follow the same rule. The desktop, the only real difference of, or the only difference in terms of how I use the desktop is sometimes I will save files to the desktop when I'm working on files. Again, this is a temporary holding place. I will generally either, once I've saved the file, I'll move it and, and store it somewhere or I'll delete it. So for example, here are some screenshots that I prepared for this post. I've now uploaded those to the blog post. Again, I don't need to keep any of these things. So with all of these documents here, I'm actually gonna delete all of these as well. So the desktop is pretty much identical to the downloads. The only difference really that I see is that I sometimes save things here um, rather than saving them in downloads. But again, you either need to delete them or, um, or, or store the files away once you're done. So that's really important. You've got the downloads and, doc uh, and desktop, both temporary holding places. And then we have the documents folder. So the documents folder is really the place where you can start to organize your files and folders. Now, actually, I'm a Dropbox user, so I have uh, my files um, organized in here. If you don't use a cloud storage uh, solution like Dropbox or Drive, you can just do it in your local documents. Um, but because I use Dropbox, yeah, this is pretty much, in, in my head, I think of Dropbox as just my documents. So, uh, yeah. You can just use documents if you want to use local storage. And within here, I have high level categories that I use to categorize my personal and business files. So um, for example, in the property folder, if I go into our house, I've got documents related to insurance, loan documents, legal documents, and so on. So we kind of go from this higher level, um, you know, like property, and it breaks down, this is our old house, and then it breaks down into like subcategories. So again, if I go back to Dropbox, maybe I'll show you my business folder. Oh, it's my, I use the word muse, uh, read the four hour work week. And uh, yeah, so the business folder is broken down into things like accounting, products, an archive, podcast, this kind of thing. So you, you basically break things down again and again and again um, into this kind of folder hierarchy. So you go from a high level parent folder down into subcategories, into subcategories. So with accounting, for example, you know, a logical way to break things down is by year. Um, and then if you go into here, I've got all of the documents related to this financial year, receipts and things and so on. So you, the general rule, and, and obviously the way you break things down is gonna differ from folder to folder and based on the type of documents that you're storing, but just follow that simple idea of start with a high level kind of category. You could have home, business, um, work, family, and break it down. 
into you know home might break down into insurance and uh um receipts and i don't know um yeah loan documents whatever it is that you want to store related to home now one of the common arguments for keeping icons and folders and things on your desktop is that you can get quick access to them but i'm sorry i don't buy that argument um, i don't see how if you have a load of icons on the desktop that you can quickly find anything um, fortunately on the mac if you use the shortcut command space you can bring up the spotlight search uh, the same is true on the pc i'm not sure of the shortcut but down in your start menu on the bottom left you can bring up the search very quickly and this is a great way to find documents that you quickly want to get access to so i could say let's search for business performance this is a spreadsheet that maybe i want to bring up and boom i can just hit enter and i can open this uh spreadsheet so it's a nice way of quickly getting access to files without having to dig deep down within folders and remember where you put things so that's one option that you've got the other option is to use tags now think of tags as a way of grouping files together from a few different locations or folders and I was a bit slow to adopt tags in the beginning. I've, I've used, I'm familiar with the concept of tags from things like Evernote, but I didn't really quite grasp how I could use it for files until I created this one, which is favorite. So these are the favorite documents that I quickly want to get access to, maybe PDFs that I share frequently with clients, getting access to business receipts, or um, you know images and logos and things that I need to maybe use on a frequent basis. So these files are all stored in different places. They all live you know, very, in dispersed folders on the computer but by tagging them I can bring them into this you know find them all very quickly through this one tag so that's another thing you can do I mean I have another one here for resources I have a number of free resources available to download on my website if I want to quickly get access to these so I can maybe email one of them to someone I've used a tag for resource here and obviously the tags that you choose to use are going to depend on the type of files that you're storing and uh, you know the nature of your work Final quick tip, actually, um, just related to naming. I do recommend keeping um, file names, you know, short but descriptive. And with receipts and invoices, I do recommend using a uh, naming convention where you basically have a prefix, which is the year, the month, and the day. Um, for things like invoices, which are kind of, it, it makes sense to organize them by date, using a prefix like that can be really handy for those kind of time-sensitive documents as well. So there you have it. I hope that was useful. I hope that's prompted some ideas on how you can better organize and store your files and folders. Again, if you have any feedback or questions, please let me know in the comments below this video or blog post. Thanks again for watching.